द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है असी गल शुरू की क्वींस डिस्ट्रिक्ट अटर्नी द इलैक्शन की जीडी जून ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ न प्राइमरीज हो रही हैं द डेमोक्रेटिक प्राइमरीज अज साडे शामिल हैं उस इलैक्शन वास्ते एक होर कैंडीडेट ऑनरेबल जज ग्रेगरी लैसैक वी वेलकम यू जज थैंक यू हरजोत इट्स आर ऑनर टू हैव यू हेयर टूडे uh judge can you first of all please tell us what's the role of a da in our criminal justice system the district attorney is the chief law enforcement official of the county mm -hmm. the district attorney prosecutes the cases that the police bring in when they arrest people mm -hmm. and the district attorney has the power and authority to initiate his own investigations Mm -hmm. through his own detectives and present cases to the grand jury so uh does uh, the district attorney have any discretionary powers in exercise of all this yes he can decide not to prosecute a case he can decide to prosecute a case mm -hmm. and he'll decide what the disposition should be at the end of the case and he'll decide what punishment he should recommend to the judge so that's a very important role assi uh, egal samjhiye ki district attorney da jehda office hai oh ek bada hi important office hai criminal justice system vich itthe us vich aur sade vaste e janna bahut zaruri hai ki kehde candidates is position vaste run karde pain so that we make an informed choice ki assi kis candidate nu support karna hai uh judge tell us something about yourself did you uh, were, were you born and raised in queens i was raised in woodside queens the woodside section i lived the first 30 years of my life there mm -hmm. i attended the local grammar school st sebastians mm -hmm. went to holy cross high school mm -hmm. queens college in flushing mm -hmm. and new york law school all and right my wife i uh, also grew up in woodside my wife patty Mhm. Mm and we got married and we moved to Richmond Hill. Still in Queens. Still in Queens. We moved about 5 miles away from Woodside. We raised our three children uh -huh. in Richmond Hill. Uh-huh. And we've lived in Richmond Hill since 1986. You you're still a resident of Richmond Hill? Always will be. <laughs> uh -huh. Good God to know. Always Good will to know. Be. Uh Judge, we will uh speak a little about your experience uh which has made the queens bar call you a well qualified candidate and you might be the most uh, qualified candidate for this position uh, judge will you tell us which year did you become uh, an assistant district attorney uh, in march 1978 right after i graduated law school and that was with the queens district attorney queens, office queens district attorney and how long uh, were you a district attorney for 25 years 25 years I served the people of Queens for 25 years and uh, you were named as head of the homicide division which year was that that was when i was 30 years old that would be 1984 january of 84 can you tell us something about that experience well i worked my way up through the ranks mm -hmm. and the ultimate position to me is to try murder cases. Mm -hmm. And I started trying murder cases and I had good results. And at the time there was an opening for the chief of the homicide bureau mm -hmm. and the district attorney, Mr. Santucci offered me the job and I was made the chief of the homicide bureau in the early part of 1984. I was in charge of the investigation and prosecution of all the murder cases in Queens. Mm -hmm. And over the years I probably uh, in charge of the investigation of over 2500 murder cases and for how long did you head that division well when judge brown came in mm -hmm. in june of 1991 mm -hmm. uh, after he was in for a, a period of time he created a major crimes division which had two homicide bureaus in it a special victims bureau a career criminal bureau major case bureau and i was in charge of that whole division i was made the executive assistant district attorney 
Uh, Judge, there is a famous case that you have been associated with. That's a 1985 stun uh, gun case. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, that was in uh, the 106th Precinct in Ozone Park. Mm -hmm. uh, back in April of 1985, uh, unknown, unbeknownst to us, there was a street narcotics unit in that precinct, mm -hmm. and some of the officers were using a, a, a stun gun, a term I had never heard before, that case. And I was notified by a defense attorney that when he met his client mm -hmm. in the arraignment part, that's where you go to see a judge for the first time after mm -hmm. arrest, he had burn marks all over his body. Mm -hmm. So I started in the investigation, and we were able to present the evidence to the grand jury, mm -hmm. and five police officers were indicted, a sergeant and a lieutenant included. It was one of the major scandals in the history of the New York City Police Department, one of the major scandals. Based on that happening, the uh, head of the precinct had to retire, the borough commander of all of Queens had to retire, the chief of p patrol for the entire city of New York had to retire. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge of that case. So, so you have a history for, uh, of standing up for the citizen? That's correct. It wasn't easy, especially back then, to go against the New York City Police Department. But that's the duty of the district attorney, protect mm -hmm. the citizens, mm -hmm. not only from the criminals, but any abuse of authority mm -hmm. from law enforcement. We, we appreciate that, Judge. And in 1986, I guess you were involved in prosecution of the uh, of the people who murdered uh, uh, police officer John uh, Scrangella. Is that right? That's correct, John Scarangella. Mm -hmm. He was um, in a patrol car, a marked New York City patrol car, with his partner, Richard Rainey. Mm -hmm. And they were in the St. Albans section of the 113th Precinct and there was a, a report of a white van that was being used for burglaries. They spotted a white van and they followed it for a couple blocks and they pulled it over. Before they could get out of their police car, before they could even unholster their guns, two men came out of that van, a driver and a passenger, and they fired 25 bullets into that police car. <laughs> and John Scarangella was hit three times in the head. Richard Officer Rainey was mm -hmm. shot eight times, but he survived. Officer Scarangella passed away about two weeks later. There was a manhunt, a nationwide manhunt to find these men, and they arrested one of them in Sumter, South Carolina in uh, the summertime of that year, mm -hmm. and they arrested the second one in January in the city of Philadelphia. And those men were brought to justice? Yes, the case was tried three times. First time, there mm -hmm. was a hung jury, mm -hmm. 10 to two for conviction. The second time, there was a hung jury, eight to four for acquittal. And then I was assigned to the case, mm -hmm. and we tried the case mm -hmm. and got a conviction in front of a jury. In fact, today's June 6th? Yes. Yes, June Today 6th, was the day? Eight, 1986. Today was the day the jury came back and convicted him. That's, that's good to know, Judge. And, uh, when did you take over the Major Crimes Division? That was um, after Judge Brown was in the office for about a year. He came in in 91, so it was like the end of 92. End of 92? Yes. A and when did you take the bench? I was elected November of 2003. Mm -hmm. January 1st, 2004, I took the bench as a Supreme Court judge. And how long uh, did that stint last? Supreme Court term is 14 years. Mm -hmm. So I served my 14 year term. Mm -hmm. I ran for re-election in 2017. Mm -hmm. I was re-elected and nine months into my term in September of last year, 2018, I resigned when I, after I had a conversation with Judge Brown, a personal conversation, mm -hmm. and it became apparent that he was not going to run again for re-election. Mm -hmm. So you cannot run for office from the bench. Mm -hmm. So I had to resign my judgeship. I gave up a job that was paying me a lot of money, <laughs> basically the same as the district attorney. Mm -hmm. I gave that up because mm -hmm. the district attorney's job is too important. Mm -hmm. Too important for a politician to have, 
mm -hmm. or too important for someone with no experience to have? Uh, you know, can you tell us something about some of the cases that have stayed with you uh, during that time? Well, my time as a judge, yes, um, about three years ago, I tried the defendant who was indicted for murdering police officer Brian Moore mm -hmm. in the 105th Precinct. Mm -hmm. And he was in, convicted in front of me of murder in the first degree by the jury. Mm -hmm. And I sentenced him to life without parole. Mm -hmm. Another one was uh, there was a, a Iman who was walking on Liberty Avenue and 79th Street in Ozone Park, Liberty Avenue, 79th Street. And with his assistant, and they were both murdered by a lone gunman who came out of the crowd and just killed the both of them in uh, the street. That person was indicted, Oscar Morell, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. He was indicted, he was tried in front of me, mm -hmm. and he was convicted by the jury, mm -hmm. and I sentenced him to life without parole. So, uh, we, we see that uh, Judge Lasak uh, has experience uh, both defending the rule of law and defending uh, the innocent citizens who might be victims of uh, police or the system abuse. Uh, famed defense attorney Barry Sheck uh, ca called him a true minister of justice. Uh, Your Honor, ca can, you, can you again tell us what are the reasons that you're running for this office now? As I just said, this office is too important. Mm -hmm. It's too mm -hmm. important to the people of the county for somebody who has no experience or somebody who's just a career politician mm -hmm. who needs a job mm -hmm. because they're term limited out of their present job. Two of my opponents mm -hmm. are term limited out of their present job. They're good people. Mm -hmm. They're nice people. They do a good job in their political office, but the district attorney's office requires a, spe a special skill set because mm -hmm. there are 325 lawyers working there. Judge, we'll take a short break at this stage. We'll come back, uh, keep watching the way forward. Aj asi gal karreya Judge Gregory Lasek nal jede ki candidate hage Queens District Attorney Office aste. Judge, I would like to ask you, what do you see? the role of a district attorney being. Uh, I, I ask you in the context that we have seen uh, varying uh, policy ideas, ideologies. There are some candidates who have been talking about decarceral and restorative justice. So, so, so what do you think uh, should be the role and, and how do you see these new uh, ideas? The main role of the district attorney is to keep the people, all 2.3 million people of Queens mm -hmm. County safe. Mm -hmm. Got to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. They want to be safe in their homes. Mm -hmm. They want their children to be safe when they're going back and forth to school or going wherever they go. And they, they want to be safe. Mm -hmm. They want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. That's the main role to me. Mm -hmm. Now, the system needs reform. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, young people get caught up in the system with a small amount of marijuana mm -hmm. or doing something stupid, breaking somebody's window. Those kind of cases should be either deferred to programs, give a program instead of going to prison, mm -hmm. or decline to prosecute them mm -hmm. with a program. Mm -hmm. Because once you saddle a young person with a criminal record, Mm -hmm. It affects the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. It'll mm -hmm. prevent them from getting into a good school, mm -hmm. getting a good job, getting into a good union. Mm -hmm. So there is need for reform. Mm -hmm. The best person to reform the system is someone who knows the system, mm -hmm. who has relationships with all the partners in the system. Mm -hmm. A DA can't go in there on day one and say, I'm going to change this or this because you got to have partners with the police department and the other police units like the Port Authority police mm -hmm. that deal with the DA's office. You gotta have a relationship with the ju judiciary, the judges. Mm -hmm. 
I resigned as the deputy administrative judge. Mm -hmm. I was the number two judge in Queens County. Mm -hmm. So all of those people are my former colleagues. Mm -hmm. When I left the DA's office, mm -hmm. I was the number three person in that office. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people are still there. Mm -hmm. They know me, they respect me. Mm -hmm. So those relationships are so important to make change because to make change, all those other partners in the criminal justice system have mm -hmm. to go along with the change that you want. Mm -hmm. Someone comes in there has never worked in, the, in that area, mm -hmm. they're not gonna be able to change anything. Especially people that have been attacking the system during this campaign. Mm -hmm. you know, the other partners are not gonna cooperate with them. When you say change, do you think uh, we need to go as far as a decarceral and restorative, uh, restorative justice? Or? No. Mm -hmm. You have to look at this in two sections. Number one, mm -hmm. violent crimes, violent criminals, your murders, murderers, rapists, and robbers. Mm -hmm. You gotta take a hard line on them. Mm -hmm. With exceptions, sometimes there's aberrational behavior on one night mm -hmm. or one day. Mm -hmm. So you can always, everything is a case-by-case -case basis, but violent criminals should not be allowed in our society mm -hmm. because they tend to commit crimes again. They repeat some, uh, repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. And as the DA, you have a duty to keep the 2.3 million safe from mm -hmm. people who may be on a, a road to harm them. Judge, uh I, I would ask you, uh, in this context, uh, some people have been uh, alleging that you have been very hard, uh, you have taken a very hard uh, view of this thing. Uh, some people have c called you mass incarcerator, or, or even uh, we r recently heard the word Mr. Murder. C can you tell us uh, something uh, which, which uh, proves this wrong? And, and, and I particularly speak uh, uh, about your record. We know what you have done with the wrong man cases. Can you tell us something about that? Right. That Mr. Murder title came when I left the DA's office. Mm -hmm. The New York Times mm -hmm. did a feature story on me on page one of the city section. Mm -hmm. And the title of the article was Mr. Murder. Mm -hmm. I had never heard that term referred to me in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they got that from, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And some people kid me about that afterwards. Mm -hmm. That's where that name came from. Mm -hmm. I have dealt mainly with murder cases for the last 39 years, both as a DA, mm -hmm. chief of homicide and executive assistant, mm -hmm. major crimes, and as the judge in the homicide part. Each courtroom is called the part. I was in the homicide part, mm -hmm. so most of my career I've been dealing with murder cases and mm -hmm. other violent criminals. Mm -hmm. That's where I probably got a reputation. But when I became a Supreme Court judge, mm -hmm. normally having worked in the DA's office for 25 years, mm -hmm. I would be sent to the Bronx mm -hmm. or sent to Brooklyn mm -hmm. or would sit in the criminal term in Jamaica, in the civil term, I'm sorry, in mm -hmm. Jamaica mm -hmm. because of 25 years with the DA's office and the mm -hmm. DA's office are the ones who come into the courtroom to prosecute the mm -hmm. crimes. Mm -hmm. The judge, the administrative judge, Judge Fisher at the time, mm -hmm. he spoke to the defense bar, he talked to the prominent lawyers in Queens and the defense bar, and they all agreed that I could stay in the criminal term. That was my reputation. Mm -hmm. Firm, but fair. Mm -hmm. So the defense lawyers who would be trying the cases in front of me mm -hmm. said, no, nah, we trust Greg. You know, let him stay in the criminal term. Mm -hmm. So Judge Fisher put me in the drug treatment part mm -hmm. where we work to help people have the addiction mm -hmm. to drugs, mm -hmm. to disease. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, I mo mostly dealt with murderers, rapists, and robbers. This was something new for me. Mm -hmm. And it was a great experience. And every one of those people that we saved, we, you know, we had to have a lot of patience because they would fall. You have to get them up they would fall again when you have the addiction. And uh, everyone that we saved that survived and completed the program was a success story. But Judge, can, can you tell us something about those 20 cases that you uh, reinvestigated? Okay. 
Back in the 90s, I started getting calls from attorneys or visits from attorneys mm -hmm. or even letters from inmates of people upstate in prison, claims of innocence. Mm -hmm. And I always would entertain them. But there was only like one or two earlier in my career. At this particular point in time, there was a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I reinvestigated everyone I entertained, everyone that came in front of me. And these people were already incarcerated? Yes. Mm -hmm. They were either arrested, indicted, or convicted mm -hmm. sitting in jail. Mm -hmm. One of them um, was sitting in jail for six years on a sentence of eight and a third to 25 mm -hmm. for a rape that occurred in Woodside mm -hmm. on 69th Street, right off the 7 train. Mm -hmm. And there was a man who was in New York only to take care of his sick uncle. Mm -hmm. He's from Alabama. Mm -hmm. I call him a gentle giant, a big, soft-spoken man. Mm -hmm. He was eating an ice cream cone. He had just gotten off the train, mm -hmm. came from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. His girlfriend had made him dinner. It was his birthday that day. Mm -hmm. He's walking, eating an ice cream cone, going down the street, and the police officers thought he fit the description of the person who attacked the woman mm -hmm. a few minutes before that. So they brought him back to the ambulance, and he went... He went willingly mm -hmm. because he had nothing to hide, and she identified him. Based on a description, you could have picked up any man of color mm -hmm. that w would have been fit in that description. Mm -hmm. She identified him. He was indicted, mm -hmm. went to trial in front of a jury. Mm -hmm. They convicted him, mm -hmm. was sentenced to eight and a third to 25 years, mm -hmm. was sitting in prison six years. I was able to prove that at the time she was attacked, this man had just gotten on a J train in Brooklyn mm -hmm. at Halsey Street and was making his way back to Queens to take care of his sick uncle. Hence, when the police saw him, he was eating an ice cream cone. Mm -hmm. I did that 20 times, 20 times. So this reputation that you referred to, mm -hmm. uh, this belies that reputation because in order to do that, I had to go against a decision by a detective that arrested this man. Mm -hmm an assistant DA who wrote up the case, a grand jury that indicted him, Supreme Court judge that said the indictment was good, and a jury that convicted him, and the appellate division that said there was no problem with that conviction. And I had to go all of those decisions. And most of these uh, men were men of color? They were all men of color. They were all men of color. So, Asi, uh, and Judge Lesak, the history here in an at least 20 cases, Jina which uh, convictions hoi di sen, log jail which ge, inna ne apni position te, un cases no reopen kita, or un uh, jade bekasur log sen, unna no chudwaya, unna no uh, release karwaya. Asi, uh, judge, so in your own words, what differentiates you from other candidates in this race? What you, just, what you just said, my experience, my experience not only as a prosecutor, mm -hmm. as a trial lawyer, mm -hmm. as a chief of homicide, as an executive assistant, I had at any time between 60 and almost 100 lawyers working for me mm -hmm. in the DA's office. Mm -hmm. There are 330 lawyers approximately working in the DA's office at any time. Mm -hmm. And my experience exonerate, reinvestigating these cases. It's so important. When I go back into that office, I want to set the proper tone. Mm -hmm. uh, so, sometimes DAs do not accept the fact that there's a wrong man. There. They, they can't uh, accept that fact. You have to have an open mind. Mm -hmm. Everyone the police bring in is not, bring into your office is not guilty. <laughs> you got to be able to differentiate. Uh, judge, we don't have any Punjabi-speaking ADAs in the DA's office. Is that something uh, you want to look into? The beauty of Queens County mm -hmm. is I never have to get on an airplane to see the world because the entire world is in Queens County. Mm -hmm. We're the most diverse county in the universe, mm -hmm. all right? Yes, we should have, and I will make sure we have a Punjabi-speaking assistant DA. I want the victims of crimes, and that's what being a DA is all about, the victims of crime mm -hmm. to be able to come in and witnesses to come in and feel comfortable mm -hmm. when they see AD assistant DAs that look like them. Mm -hmm. 
with the most diverse county. Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, our particular community uh, faces uh, issues of hate crime. There have been issues of racism, bullying. Is, is that something uh, you, you, you uh, have a plan for? Yes, I do. I plan to hire 18 community assistant DAs, one mm -hmm. from each of the assembly districts. Mm -hmm. And that particular ADA is going to have a relationship with the community leaders, the civic leaders, the political leaders, the religious leaders, mm -hmm. and the police department in that particular assembly district. So when there's a problem, like these hate crimes that are coming up the, against certain groups of people, mm -hmm. We'll go right in there, bring in the other assist and find out who the leaders are. We'll mm -hmm. sit down and try to resolve the situation, educate the young kids, because it's mostly young kids that are doing this, mm -hmm. with few exceptions, mm -hmm. and they should know you can't do that. You can't <laughs> do that. And if there is a prosecutable crime, mm -hmm. they'll be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. They'll be prosecuted. A son, uh, Judge Lesak, Asi Indana Galkiti. I hope to see Nadi Gala very closely Sunia or to see Apna decision make Karoge or June 25th no to see vote Karoge for the uh, for the election of Queen's District Attorney. Thank you very much, Judge. We thank you for coming here today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. My thank pleasure. You. The way forward is thoda fir tu swagat hai. Last week, asi gal kar rahe si Sikhi de scholar Dr. Inderjit Singh Jinal, Dr. I.J. Singh as popularly known. Dr. Sahab, last time asi gal kar rahe si ge identity di, asi gal ki thi ke jede 2016 presidential candidate si ge Bobby Jindan. Una ne, he made a point that we have to stop being hyphenated Americans. Ustuna the matlab a siga that you have to stop being Indian American or something else, you just have to be American. Is there a baki agar koi gore jade hage o ithe renden and they have adopted uh, the culture completely and uh, have become uh, complete Americans. Do we still need to maintain that identity? What do you think, Doctor? Well, to really delve into this, Mm -hmm. We have to play with the, the idea of a community and culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and identity and politics. Mm -hmm. We've got to bring them together. Gee. Now, sociologists tell us, I think I forget the guy's name now, which is probably 1903 or 1904, around that time. Uh, a leading sociologist, mm -hmm. he said that uh, religions are the glue mm -hmm. of a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do we need a community? Mm -hmm. Look at uh, an individual, the human being. Mm -hmm. The human being at birth cannot survive mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. not for a moment, mm -hmm. forget a day. G G and uh, as a matter of fact, if you look at it in life, a, a human cannot survive alone, although there are experiments that people do, you know, people who leave the world and go live on the mountain top, mm -hmm. those are exceptions. And I would say they're not normal uh, parts of normal uh, societies. Gee. Normal societies do not go without that glue which unites them, bring them together. Mm -hmm. Because what we do Gee. depends on the community acting together. So religions then are the glue for it that helps unite them. And of course, sometimes the glue uh, sets to the consistency of crazy glue. <laughs> and then it's not very good mm -hmm. for the people. Mm -hmm. And of course, how, do, how what, what is community seen, seen by? The practices. Mm -hmm. Practices become traditions. Mm -hmm. When do they become traditions? When they work well. Mm -hmm. Practices that work well become traditions, much like for you as a lawyer, mm -hmm. your precedent mm -hmm. takes 
So, so doctor, the okay. question is. No, 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 let me, let me yes, bring yes, you to yes. a little, little modern time. Sure. So the community becomes that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, of course, good neighbors need good fences. Good fences make good neighbors. That's a typical American saying. Mm -hmm. And there's some privacy that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Individual privacy, mm -hmm. and then community privacy. Mm -hmm. And there's privacy that stems from the fact that there, there are differences in culture, mm -hmm. in language, in where you come from, in the cuisine that you eat, in the habits that you have, mm -hmm. the ha habits that have formed you. Ji. And the group in the community have the same bloody habits. Ji. And those are our tr traditions. Mm -hmm. And traditions then become sacred. Ji. Ji. Huh? They become sacred and they def define the religion. If you are ready to kill for that or die for the tradition, mm -hmm. you don't know the history. Mm -hmm. You don't know when it was formed. You don't know what was the reason for it. But this is the way it has been. You've done it for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And I'll pretty well kill you if we don't. Mm. Let me do what I want to do. Ji. And that becomes logic. That's not logic. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can keep the, the uh, fences between neighbors, mm -hmm. good fences mm -hmm. where communication can occur, mm -hmm. in other words, a communities which can live together, mm -hmm. religions that can live together mm -hmm. peacefully, mm -hmm. and I can give you lines from Gurbani that tell us to do exactly that, mm -hmm. then we have a nice living. A community that lives together, progressive society. Mm -hmm. When they, that crazy glue become, has, uh, comes to separate us, mm -hmm. then you do not have a healthy society. And that's what we become because our survival depends on it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's a game of survival. Doctor, my question, uh, in context of immigrant societies, you know, that societies that go to different places and, uh, you know, we make a deliberate effort to maintain uh, those identities, those cultures, take it with us. My, my question to you is, so you said that these traditions, they evolve with time, they have different influences. Of course. Are we supposed to be burdened by those traditions or we uh, adopt the new ones as they happen? Uh, like, uh, let's say, Asi Sadi community jade te badi struggle kar deya ki apa Punjabi culture jade hai o maintain rakhiye. Magar, agar asi kisi Punjab de bande na gal kariye ya India vich kisi naal bhi gal kariye, o to anu history dasega ki meri family Scythian tribe to aaye hai, koi North Pole to aaye hai, koi Middle East to aaye hai. O to with the tradition se ki ona di family thi. They stopped somewhere and started a new tradition. They, they're defending Punjabi tradition, not the tradition from the North Pole. So, so how much do we carry forward? What do we leave behind? Do we start fresh here? Oh, how, how do you look at that? You've got, you got a series of problems in that statement. Mm -hmm. One, of course, is when the immigrant comes here, mm -hmm. his body comes here, Ji. his mind is still partially there. Mm -hmm. okay. A person in a society and a society itself, whole, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You create for yourself a safe space, mm -hmm. a space, Ji. protective space mm -hmm. to be safe. So for your mind, what is it where you were raised, the way you were raised? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. comfort zone is how you were raised. Ji. That's what you want to create here. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to recreate. So you want to create institutions and space which capture the sight, sound, smells of home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because outside, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's threatening. Yeah. It's strange. The difference between the stranger and I. So what about the kids who were born here? Ah, but that, that's the struggle. Mm -hmm. But you see, Again, as I, as I said, I think, uh, or I will say that now, I tell people that, you know, if you look at a wedding ceremony, mm -hmm. no matter what religion you're from, mm -hmm. no matter which one, mm -hmm. Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, Je you know, Jewish, Christian, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. how long does it take to get uh, wedded? Mm -hmm. Really, it's a 15 minutes ceremony, 15, 20 minutes, you're done. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Why? We, if you want to create, uh, to, to convert that, transform that wedding into a marriage, mm -hmm. a marriage where there's a merger of people mm -hmm. and ideas mm -hmm. and outlooks to create a whole greater than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. How long does that take? A lifetime, mm -hmm. if you're lucky, mm -hmm. or more, if mm -hmm. you're not, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's true. Mm -hmm. And so we are in a conflict, mm -hmm. in conflict zone. The immigrant comes, he is in a conflict. Mm -hmm. He is abandoned mm -hmm. his comfort zone. 
-hmm. He's got to create his own. Mm -hmm. So the institutions that he makes, mm -hmm. he makes sure that it'll capture what he remembers. Mm -hmm. As how he was raised. Mm -hmm. His little kids are not being raised in that. They are being raised in a different environment. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. It's like when you create a fusion mm -hmm. uh, meals. I'm reminded of the fact that Punjabi food is uh, the al roti. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the roti came from? India? Mm -hmm. Much of India doesn't eat rotis mm -hmm. or naans. Mm -hmm. They came to us in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because every invader that came into India until the British and the French came by sea, they came into through the Khyber Pass into Punjab. Mm -hmm. So Punjab is a state that became a hybrid state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The early Greeks, the nomads, the, the, the Mughals, the Mongols, anybody mm -hmm. you could think of. That means our G DNA is richer for it. Mm -hmm. Our language is richer for it. Punjabi. Ji. What is Punjabi? Sure, it has elements of Sanskrit in it because Sanskrit is there mm -hmm. for the larger community. Mm -hmm. Sure. But look at Punjabi. It has elements of um, pure Arabic. Mm -hmm. It has elements of pure Persian. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think the Guru Granth has probably more than eight languages in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Ji. And Punjabi mm -hmm. has that. Our culture is that. Mm -hmm. I can in India travel a couple hundred miles, end up in a place where nobody is in a Punjabi, mm -hmm. cannot speak in Punjabi, know nothing of Punjabi culture. If Guru Nanak traveled all over the known world of, of his time, mm -hmm. you know, north to Tibet and west to the Makkah and that area, and mm -hmm. east, Assam and so on, mm -hmm. he traveled all over. Mm -hmm. If his message was only to be for Punjab, mm -hmm. why would he travel all that place? Why would he go there? Why would he include references to Islam and Hinduism in there? डॉक्टर साहब असी एक छोटी जी ब्रेक लांगे गल जारी रखेंगे एक छोटी जी ब्रेक बाद देखते रहो द वे फॉरवर्ड वेलकम बैक टू द वे फॉरवर्ड डॉक्टर साहब जेड़ा जेड़ी स्ट्रगल है जेड़ी जेड़ा कन्फ्लिक्ट आंदा है जेड़ी तो फस्ट जनरेशन आँदी है साड़ी तरह वो तो मेनटेन रखती है असी सुरूप भी मेनटेन रखते हैं असी उस जुड़े हुए हैं और रीक्रिएट करने की कोशिश करते हैं जोड़ा कन्फलिक्ट है वो सा फ्यूचर जनरेशन नाल असी उन्होंने भी उसी मोल्ड लिया की कोशिश करते हैं और जी एफिनिटी है वह कि जरूरी है क्या ये एक सरवाइवल इंसटिंक्ट है एक डरे दे बंदे का कि मैं एक नवी जगह आया अगर कल कोई पंगा होंगे तो जेडे मेरे अपने जे बंदे उ मेरी प्रो प्रोटेक्शन वास्ते आएंगे डॉक्टर साहब मैं तुम्हें तो एक एग्जाम्पल दिता रीसेंटली मेरे को एक पाकिस्तान के एक एल्डरली लेडी आए उन्होंने आके मैं एक बड़ी बड़ी दुखद लाइफ की स्टोरी सुनाई उन्हों की बड़ा इल ट्रीट किया गया उन्होंने उन्होंने फैमिली तरफ तो उन्होंने हसबेंड इतने से आई थिंक कोई भी मेल मैंबर ऐसा नहीं सी उन्हों की फैमिली का जिसने उन्होंने नाल बदतमीजी ना किया और ईवन रेप ना किया हो शक करते हैं कि उन्होंने हसबेंड में मारिया गया जब वो इतने आ गए उस तो बाद उन्होंने हसबेंड की जिन्हें सारी प्रॉपर्टी थी प्रॉपर्टी सी हड़प कर लीती गई वो मैं आके कह रहे हैं कि मैं डरदी हाँ कि मेरे जोड़े बच्चे ने अगर वो पाकिस्तान जाएंगे इन्हों मार दिता जाएगा एंड एट द सेम टाइम वो मैं ये कहें कि जीडी इतने की सोसायटी से अमेरिकन सोसायटी इतने के अमेरिकन दे व वेरी नाइस टू हर उन्होंने वो बड़ी हैल्प की है वो मैं ये भी कहती है कि जेडे मेरे बच्चे क्योंकि इतने बॉर्न एंड रेज होए तो दे हैव टर्न आउट टू बी वेरी ऑनेसट पीपल वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड उन्होंने वो चलाकिया नहीं आती है दे हैव टर्न आउट टू बी डीसेंट ह्यूमन बींग्स बट शी वॉन्ट्स टू टेक दैम टू पाकिस्तान कि अदरवाइज वो कल्चर कि वे लर्न करे करेंगे आई आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू मतलब क्या चीज़ उन्होंने सिखाना चाहती है किस चीज़ की एफिनिटी है वेल शी इज राइट एंड शी नो शी हैज पॉइंट टू मेक अगेन जी द आइडिया इज द कंटिन्यूटी जी क्रिएट अ कम्यूनिटी एंड द कम्यूनिटी कंटिन्यूज अक्रॉस जनरेशन इट गोइंग टू गो अक्रॉस जनरेशन यू गॉट टू ट्रांसमिट योर प्रैक्टिस योर हैबिट्स which become your traditions which mm -hmm. become sacred as it as i 
illustrated to you earlier. Ji. How are you going to transmit them? Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, the transmission would be for each thing that you transmit, mm -hmm. you create a certain atmosphere to understand it, to appreciate the history. Ji. In other words, to recognize that when things come to us from the past, mm -hmm. the history made us what we are today, mm -hmm. and it will determine what we will be to tomorrow. Okay. And the, they are uh, interlinks, they are linked yesterday, today, tomorrow, Ji. the future. And you got to connect them. Mm -hmm. huh? Now connection doesn't come just by insisting that this is sacred and you will bloody well bow your head 20 times a day to this. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I'll cut your head off. Ji. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's what religions do sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they have done that in history. Mm -hmm. That indicates our own frustration. Mm -hmm. We need to make them meaningful so they're comfortable with it. Ji. Huh? I may be, I, I would say I have to be at a stage where when I do something mm -hmm. which is traditional, mm -hmm. it connects me to the past. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, shows me, in a sense, mm -hmm. the future. Ji. I am at a point of, um, as T.S. Eliot said, at the intersection of um, um, time with the timeless. Mm -hmm. When I say timeless, I don't mean that it came from the heavens. Mm -hmm. I mean that it's time before me and after me. Mm -hmm. huh? Ji. That's immortality, or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's beyond my sense. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. intersection of time with the timeless. Ji. It almost uh, seems like a, something came out of a s sacred textbook. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. so this T.S. Eliot Ji. talking to you. And that's how I look at it. So when we mix traditions, some of them, practices sometimes, I say that we enrich them. Mm -hmm. When we mix musical instruments, mm -hmm. we create an orchestra which speaks better, mm -hmm. more richer mm -hmm. than one instrument alone, mm -hmm. richer than the finest violin, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. even the triangle has a place, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Or a pair of symbols have a place. Or, or Dr. A. J. D. Uh, a history or culture nu continue rakhna generations vich further la ke jana mm -hmm. usdi uh, right. sport is a bada jada strong argument or example ditta janda hai oh a hai ki jada jewish people unna nu apne karan tu 2000 saal pehle kad ditta gaya they spread all over the world but jithe vi gaye unna ne apni history apna religion apni history alive rakhi apne traditions okay. alive rakhe okay, naal la ke gaye naal la ke gaye However, Anji. what Ji. it did was Ji. it increased their social capital hmm. because when they interacted with other religions and other thoughts, Ji. it's like when our food mixed with the what came from the Middle East Ji. and what came from uh, perhaps Bombay or some place and we mixed it, mm -hmm. we created a richer cuisine, mm -hmm. we created a richer music, we created a richer tradition, mm -hmm. not poorer, richer. Ji. So I value what we have, Ji. only then can I contribute. If I don't value, I have nothing to contribute. Yes, yes, yes. Doctor, when we talk about identity, di gal karte ya, do you separate the religious identity from the cultural identity? Again, the issue is not quite so simple or easy. Yes. <coughs> because when I look at identity, our cultural identity, the community identity, Ji. That's why I started the community and beginning of the community. Ji. It's tied with our history, mm -hmm. with our politics as well. Dr. Let me put, uh, put it this you, way. You cannot separate the political identity from the culture, Ji. and you cannot separate the religious identity from the culture. And I'll give those examples, but go ahead. Dr. But my question is this. Let's say somebody sitting in Somalia or somebody sitting in uh, some, some, some uh, uh, African country or anywhere converts to Sikhism. So does he need to become Punjabi as well or Pangadavi Pai, Pakodevi Absolutely not. Hmm. Absolutely not. Absolutely hmm. not. So uh, tell me, ji. when Guru Nanak traveled all over the world, ji. did he say that you must do this, 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 this to be a Sikh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
No. Mm. And you will all be Punjabis? Mm. If that is the case, look at the Panj Pyare. Ji. How many Punjabis were in it? Uno. One. Mm. One. Ji. The thing, the first one. Ji. The other four were not. Ji. The hero that we remember every day. Uh, Banda Singh Bahadur. Banda Singh Bahadur. Ji. Which Punjab was he from? Ji. 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 None. Ji. So we don't have to do that. Mm. We don't have to copy that. Mm. But what I'm saying is that beyond the cultural comfort zones that we have Ji. and value very much, Ji. there are practices that when you can we and traditions mm -hmm. that if we keep in mind the idea of connectivity, Ji. that they become universal values. Mm -hmm. And it's those universal values that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? When 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 uh, uh, Guru. When, when Guru Granth tells you ji. that we all come from the same light, ji, 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 ji. right? Mm -hmm. And when all doesn't mean just you and I, but it means all, even the guys sitting in Mogadishu. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have a part of uh, and Dr. Africa you want to find. The, wo the way the world is uh, getting shaped now, there was a time when we had this European nation type, you know, the German theories of blood and soil. Uh, we the nations were formed basis of on the basis of homogeneity of race or particular culture. Now looking at countries like uh, in the particularly in the West, U.S., Canada, Australia, so all these cultures uh, are, are coming together. They are adopting an identity, a political identity okay. at least. So so do you think that uh, era of uh, your cultural or racial identity uh, being one with a with nationhood is over? Well, things are changing. They always were changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look back, and I gave you the example of, Guru, uh, of the Gurus and the Panjipiari and where they came from and all that, mm -hmm. and his travels all over the place. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he was looking to a larger canvas, mm -hmm. not just a Punjabi canvas. Ji. He wasn't thinking of that. Mm -hmm. Guru Nanak wasn't, no Guru was. Mm -hmm. Why should we limit ourselves? Because we are products of a community. Mm -hmm. We are, we mm -hmm. always will be. Mm -hmm. And that is why, and when that, that uh, glue becomes crazy glue, mm -hmm. then we divide people into us and them. Mm -hmm. The first thing we do is us and them. Those people are, you know, from God knows where, and they, they, they do crazy things. Mm -hmm. They don't even know Punjabi. Mm -hmm. But Dr. So Ich we cannot uh, deny that we have accepted this fact uh, in the West, but in, in our countries back home, Hali is not accepted. If there is a person in Bihar, then there will be a big problem in Bihar. Look, all the people come and get a lot of people in Bihar, and they take positions and take positions. Whereas, we advocate for this thing, we have to fight for this thing, and 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 we have to fight for this thing, Pretty homogeneous dunia ban again, you again, you know, this is a human tendency. Ji. Punjab is a small place. Ji. And Bihar is, is a different state. The culture is different. The language is different. Mm -hmm. The religion is often, often different. And the people are poor. There's great poverty. Ji. Punjab is relatively mm -hmm. progressive. Ji. And the people come to seek work. Ji. Like the Mexicans who want to come here to seek work. Ji, ji, and ji. our good president is so upset about it. Ji. I can understand people are upset again because they're looking at that tribal, tribal or community. Hanji, hanji. Because that's what we form. Yeah. However, Ji. we need to look beyond. Ultimately, our richness lies in the composites that we create. Ji. Asi Dr. Sabnal in issues they gal karde rangge. Asi uh, Dr. Sabnal request karangge ki oedai sare studio ch ande ran. E important issues an. इन्ह बारे गल करना जरूरी है इन्हों समझना जरूरी है और अगर साढ़े बच्चे किधरे कोई फेलियर है कोई हिपोक्रेसी असी जिस दिन असी आप जी रहे हैं उसको असी कन्फ्रंट करिए और असी डॉक्टर साहब का बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया करते हैं इतने आने वास्ते एंड वी होप टू सी यू अगेन इन द स्टूडियो सून डॉक्टर साहब थैंक यू तुम देखते दे रहो द वे फॉरवर्ड अभी डन और